Hi, kumusta? Welcome back to our channel. Kung saan sa channel nito ang nakapit na yasin ay napakisipis na tayo. Hello, kumusta kayong lahat? Welcome back to our channel. Meron na naman tayong bagong topic sa ngayon na pag-uusapan and it's all about the basic assumptions underlying the preparation of your financial statements. Or, ipaiksiin lang natin ito, sabihin natin na ito yung mga underlying assumptions. So now, we have five assumptions to discuss. The first one is your economic entity. The second is the going concern assumption. The third one is your monetary unit. Yung pang-apat ay yung periodicity concept. At yung pang-lima naman ay yung accrual basis of accounting. Okay. Uh, yung economic entity concept kasi, actually, na-discuss na natin ito sa mga previous episodes natin. Kung saan, ang sinasabi kasi natin dito na yung company ay, or yung business as an entity, dapat hiwalay siya doon sa uh, owner or sa madaling salita, yung personal transactions ng may-ari, hindi dapat haluin doon sa mga transactions ng company for purposes of financial reporting. So now, let's proceed naman doon sa going concern assumption. Ano ba ang sinasabi nitong going concern assumption? Pag sinabi natin going concern, okay, uh, meron akong keywords na nilagay dito. We should be forward looking, we should be positive, or another term is yung optimistic. Um, kung ikaw kasi ay isang negosyante, uh, magtatayo ka ng negosyo, hindi mo iniisip na malulugi ang iyong business. Although, when you are entering a business kasi, meron, all, meron lagi ng risk and rewards. You are taking a risk. So, hindi mo alam kung kikita ka or malulugi yung negosyo mo. But, in terms of financial reporting, ang going concern assumption, sinasabi nito na yung business mo, yung negosyo mo, will continue to operate in a foreseeable future unless there is evidence to the contrary. Or, ibig sabihin, uh, merong ebidensya talaga na palugi na yung negosyo. Okay? So, that is your going concern. Now, the third one is your monetary unit concept. Okay? So, here in the Philippines, we are using Philippine Peso. So, kapag nagpo-provide tayo ng mga financial reports, dahil figures ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, quantify dito, peso ang ating pinag-uusapan. Hindi ka pwede na maglagay sa report mo ng iba-ibang denomination. I mean, iba-ibang currency. So, let's say yung cash mo in the form of Philippine Peso, tapos yung mga accounts receivable mo ay mga naka-US dollar at iba-iba pang mga currency. Uh, kailangan i-quantify natin lahat ng nasa report natin in one common denominator, which is the Philippine Peso in our setting here in the Philippines. So, that is your monetary unit concept. Now, how about the periodicity concept? When we are talking of this concept, I'd like you to bear in mind the term time-bound. Okay? time bound. Ibig sabihin, yung life of a business, it can be divided into segments of time. Pwede natin itong hati-hatiin for purposes of measurement. Remember, when we define what accounting is, merong portion sa definition na it is a process of measuring. Okay? So, kailangan mong sukatin yun at dapat merong kang time frame. Kasi hindi mo pwede siyang sukatin ng indefinite. Kailangan merong kang period. When did I start and when will it end? So normally, for businesses, nagkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag ng mga calendar year, may fiscal year, merong mga interim reporting. Okay? Um, negosyo kasi, when it is uh, asked to report its financial statements, doon sa mga uh, government agencies like BIR or SEC, time frame natin is one year. Kapag nag-umpisa yung business ng January 1 at natapos ng December 31, ang tawag natin dito, calendar year. Pero, kapag iba naman ang ginamit nitong period, let's say, for purposes of financial reporting, nag-start siya ng March 1, matapos ng end of February, 
o yung mga common halimbawa nag-umpisa ng July 1 matatapos ng June 30. Ang tawag natin doon sa kanilang period ay fiscal. So other than sa January 1 hanggang December 31, fiscal period ito. So that is your um, some of the terms na ginagamit natin pag pinag-uusapan natin itong periodicity concept. Uh, by the way, naalala ko, yung interim period. Okay, yung interim, pag sinabing interim, it is a period which is less than one year. So, kung halimbawa, um, hiningi sa'yo yung reports, financial reports, for six months. We have an interim report. Okay? Basta hindi siya isang taon. It is called interim. Now, for the last one, Let's talk about accrual basis of accounting. Ito, very common ito. Kasi ito yung isa sa mga pundasyon mo sa accounting. Pag sinabi natin accrual basis, hindi siya cash flow. Hindi siya cash basis. Okay? I-discuss natin on a separate um, session yung cash basis of accounting versus accrual basis. So ngayon, I'd like you to stick on the accounting concept of accrual accounting. Now, basahin ko lang ano, when we are talking about accrual, transactions are recorded when they occur and not when the related cash flows are received or paid. So, ang mga transactions kailangan nating i-recognize kung kailan siya nangyari. Hindi kung kailan merong involved na pera. So, kung halimbawa, nakabenta ka today pero utang mo na siya ng customer mo. Hindi mo i-record yung sales mo, yung benta mo, kung kailan mo nakolekta yung pera. Kailangan mo siyang i-recognize today. Yung collections sa susunod, mayroong entry ngayon, mayroong separate na entry sa darating na doon sa date of collection. On a separate example, kung bumili ka naman ng, let's say, bumili ka ng inventory mo, utang mo naman siya, meron kang expenses today, pero, babayaran mo siya in the future, hindi ibig sabihin na kung kailan mo siya babayaran, saka mo siya i-record sa iyong libro or sa books mo. Kung kailan nangyari yung transaction, doon mo dapat siya i-record. That is what we call accrual basis of accounting. Okay, so recap lang tayo ano, sa pinag-usapan natin ng na limang underlying assumptions. We have the economic entity concept. Number two, we have the going concern. Number three, we have the monetary unit. We have we have the periodicity concept in number four. And in number five, we have the accrual basis of accounting. Ang maaring matanong mo, Sir, may, wala ka ba dyang shortcut para maalala namin yung mga acronym kagaya ng VCAT? <laughs> okay, uh, pwede natin gamitin yung P-game. Okay? P for periodicity. G for going concern, A for accrual basis, M for monetary unit, and E for economic entity. So, yun nga lang, sinuffle natin ito. Pero pwede nyong tandaan, P, game. Or kung sa ang shortcuts or sa ang acronym kayo, mas comfortable or mas panatag. <laughs> okay? So, this is our topic for today, our session. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment down below. So, thank you for watching my video for today. If you are not yet subscribed in my channel, please do subscribe and para ma-notify ka sa mga susunod ko ng mga video uploads. Uh, maraming salamat. Sana may natutunan kayo sa session natin ngayon. And I'll see you around on the following episodes. Bye-bye!